We are going to sit back and look at two of the most fascinating chronograph references that Patek Philippe has ever made. The reference 5959 and 5370, both of which are double split chronographs, both of which are very different but very similar in the family, and both of them are very important. Surprisingly, there hasn't been much of a discussion around the reference 5959 at all. I stumbled across it the other day and really had to talk about it because it's such a character. Stylistically, its presence, what it actually represents to the family. What I learned about this reference was that Patek Philippe in the early 2000s had just switched to in-house chronograph calibers. This reference was one of the first watches to incorporate it. It was also one of the first watches to incorporate a double split. It was also at the time one of the thinnest column wheel chronograph movements ever made and perpetuated this movement all the way through to the future references. And what attracted me to the watch, I think, was its size. The watch only measures to be 33 millimeters in size and it's very much like a David and Goliath story. The model came either with a black or a white enamel dial with Breguet numerals, very classically inspired Breguet numerals, spade styled hands, Breguet styled chronograph hands. The watch hardly has any presence on the wrist. Meanwhile, when you turn it around and you look at the movement, your mind is just blown. And there's something about the discretion of this reference that really speaks volumes about how the brand developed in the early 2000s up until now. Apologies if the reference images aren't the best. Uh, these watches are very hard to come by. As we can imagine, they were made in very small amounts and are super collector pieces. They are not found anywhere nowadays. But I really like the idea that this small little watch actually encompassed a lot of what we would see in the later years. Instead of coming out with this flashy golden piece with diamonds around it, with other little tributes and bits and pieces, this model is one of the smallest sizes you can get for a men's wristwatch. It's so traditional in the way it works its lugs, in the way it sets up the dial and all of the space. The level of sparsity just between the pushers, the mono pusher on the crown, and an offset pusher at the top, it's gorgeous. Absolutely stunning. And it says a lot about someone who could wear one of these and just casually go about their day. Then we transition to the modern reference that incorporated a very similar movement. I don't know the full extent of the story. I'm sure someone can correct me in the comments. But the reference 5370 is what we now know for the double split in the family. It's a spin-off from the 5170, but this being a split second chronograph is a little bit more interesting. By the looks of things, these references only come in platinum, which is quite surprising. And of course, it lines up directly with Alango and Zona and their double split. They fall into a similar category for price. But again, even this reference, all these years later, evokes that same emotion, still uses Breguet numerals, still has a very classically proportioned and styled case. Of course, now it has been scaled up ever so slightly to fit the modern standards and modern times. But we can see the small amounts of DNA from the 5959 in this modern reference. How practical is a double split chronograph? Not very practical, unless you're recording something like a horse race and one crosses the line before the other, and you get to know just how far ahead the one was from the other. The complication of a double split is extremely impressive. They have to be very hard wearing and easy to use. Also foolproof for the most part, because you can easily get confused by pushing one button over the next. But we can take a lot away from a comparison like this. If we return back to the 5959 reference and we notice just how the lugs have been arranged, how the strap has been screw secured into the lugs, and how in a similar way the 5370 incorporates the same feature, we notice the rounded heads of the screw protrusions, how both dials incorporate the stark black finish with brightly polished numerals, how both dials are extremely legible, how the one case is a lot more traditional, straight, up, down, very old school, and the modern reference has more of a curvaceous nature, a lot more organic in form. The two watches remain largely the same. The only thing that really separates them is the size and the presence, the styling for the most part, but they both really are characters. They both represent the brand extremely well. Both of them are black beauties, dark horses, Virtually unattainable, but extremely important in the field of watchmaking and modern day time capsules, celebrating the art of watchmaking and the history that came before.